All right, welcome back to another video here today. So today we're going to be talking about integration by parts. Now integration by parts is kind of like an inverse product rule. Product rule, right? So it doesn't function as cleanly as the actual product rule does for derivatives because you can't take the integral of just every product using integration by parts. But that said, it does help us solve a wider class of problems. For example, there's a few problems that you might not be able to do with, say, u sub, that integration by parts now allows us to do. So it helps us expand our armory, if you will. So this is the formula here. So the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus integral of v du. Now, this looks like gibberish. So let's take a second and look at the proof for where this integration by parts really comes from to help us better understand this one. Okay, so let's talk about this proof. Now, this proof is going to start with the product rule. The product rule is nothing new to us. It's just that the derivative of a product of functions f of x times g of x is going to give us, we're going to have f, prime, f of x times g prime of x plus uh, g of x times f prime of x. Right? Nothing new there. Now, that's the first step of this proof. What I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate both sides with respect to x. Right? So we're going to integrate both sides of this equation with respect to x. And so the left-hand side, well, the derivative and this integral are going to cancel. right? And so what we're going to be left with is just going to be f of x times g of x yeah, is going to be equal to, well, this is an integral of a sum right here. I can split that sum into two separate integrals, right? So this is going to be the integral of f of x times g prime of x dx plus integral of g of x f prime of x dx. Okay. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this g of x f prime of x portion I'm going to subtract it over to this side of the, of the equation. Okay, and so if I do that, I'm going to be left with the integral of f of x times g prime of x dx is equal to f of x times g of x minus this guy right here. It's going to be the integral of g of x times f prime of x dx. Okay, wonderful. And this is basically the entirety of the, the more math, the math portion of this proof, right? All, basically what we've done is we've said, all right, so we've taken, we've taken our product, we've integrated it, and now we've just put it in this form here, right? Which actually gives us a very nice equation that we can, um, we can use to solve some problems. Now to get this in the, in the form that we see very regularly, all we do is we say, well, we call one function, f of x, as u, and the other one, we call it v. Right? And this is basically to put this formula in, th in terms that we see regularly. Um, and so what you get when you, when you do this is you now have this as the integral of, well, f of x is now u, so we have u, g prime of x dx is going to be dv, right? Because g prime of x dx is the derivative of v. This is going to equal f of x times g of x is going to be u times v. And then minus g of x times f prime of x is going to be minus v. And the f prime of x dx is the derivative of u, so that's going to be du. Right? And that right there is the same formula that we saw on the previous slide, and this is basically what we're going to be using to solve some problems. And the idea here fundamentally is that we have, we've identified whatever integral we're given is going to be the product of some function times the derivative of another function, and if we can figure, we can dissect this information from that, we can then go ahead and set up and you and uh, you know put this together in this equation and then we can find the integral basically that's the idea here so let's go ahead and apply this to a couple of problems 
All right, so let's start with our first example. So as we established in the proof, what we basically have in this integral here, according to integration by parts, is some function times the derivative of another function. So if we can extract that information, we can then eventually use that to figure out everything else on the right-hand side over here, okay? So our first step to that end is going to be to find what u and dv are. So we wanna find u and dv. So much like with uh, u substitution, this is one of the parts that is a little bit tricky, right? There's no one exact formula for figuring out what this is. Um, we'll talk about some of that at the end of this video, but basically this is, this is analogous to the step of u substitution where we pick some part of this function to be u and pick the other part to be dv, okay? So take my word for it for now that u is going to be x and dv is going to be e to the x dx. Take my word for it for now, and but I, we'll, I'll explain why this, why we chose these particular things the way we did uh, in just a little bit. So that's our first step. Our second step, right, is now that we have u and dv, we need to find the other parts of the right-hand side of this equation here, right? So we have u, we have dv, now we need to figure out what v is, and we need to figure out what du is, right? Because we need those two things on this side of the equation. So we want to find v and du, okay? And to do that, well, we just need to basically work with what we have up here. So to find v, or let's start with finding du, to find du, all we have to do is take a derivative of u, right? So du, just taking a derivative there, is just gonna be one, it's just gonna be one, because uh, derivative of x is one, so we just have dx here. So we have one dx or just dx. Now to solve for v, we go the other way, right? We take an integral of dv to solve for v, right? So v is gonna be the integral of e to the x dx, which is just gonna be e to the x. And we don't need to have a plus c for this particular stage of the game, okay? And this step right here is why we chose x as u and dv as e to the x. Because if you switch these, right? Let's imagine that we chose dv is equal to x dx, v would be the integral of x, which is gonna be x squared over two, which is more complicating than x, right? So this would make our problem a little bit more complicating. And so we wanna try and avoid that. We wanna try and keep things as simple as possible. And so that's why we chose e, because the integral of e to the x is just itself. So that it works very nicely that way, okay? And now all we really have to do is to plug everything into the formula, right? So what we have is going to be um, so we'll have uv, right? So we already know what u is, u is gonna be x, v is e to the x, right? And then we have minus the integral of v du, right? So v we know is e to the x, and du is going to be just dx. Wonderful. And so now we have this, we just have to go ahead and evaluate this integral over here. And so our final answer is actually, the integral of e to the x, of course, is just e to the x. So our final answer is gonna be x e to the x minus e to the x plus c. And we do need the plus c for this final integral. And that's our final answer, that's it. We can even check this if we wanted to, right? So we could do a quick check. And what you'll discover is if we take dy dx, the derivative, we'll have to use the product rule for this first guy here. So that's going to be, we'll have x e to the x, because derivative e to the x is just e to the x, plus e to the x times derivative x is just going to be 1. So we have e to the x, minus derivative e to the x, again, just e to the x. A derivative c is just going to be 0. So these two go away. And so all we're left with is just x e to the x, which is exactly what we started with up here. So we know that's correct. So that's basically how integration by parts works. So we just basically, the basically the, we start by just extracting this information as u and dv here, and then we go on and we just put everything together in the formula. So that's basically how this works. Okay, let's do one more example just to really make sure we have everything down. And the first step is gonna be the same, right? We're gonna choose u and dv. And this time I'm actually gonna encourage you to pause the video for a second and see if you can figure out, based on the conversations we had in the previous example, 
what would be a good choice for you and what would be a good choice for DV? So take a second and think about that. So I hope you figured it out. And if you guessed that u is equal to 9x squared and dv equals sine of x dx, congratulations, those are the correct answers for u and v in dv. If you didn't get that, totally fine. Let's talk about why this is a good choice. Well, remember, we have to integrate v, right? So if I integrate sine of x, right, we can actually do that right now, right? If I integrate sine of x to get v, I just get negative cosine, which is not terrible. It's still fairly simple. It doesn't get too much complicated. Whereas if I had to integrate 9x squared, right, then suddenly that becomes, uh, you know, 9 half x, you get that becomes uh, 3x cubed, which is more complicating. And that's not something I want. Right? So therefore, by integrating sine of x, that actually I managed to save myself a little bit of complexity. So that works out quite nicely. And so for u, we just have to you know find du then. And again, this works out nicely because du for whenever you take a derivative of a polynomial function, it becomes simpler. So this also works out very nicely for us. That's why this choice of u and dv works out very nicely. Okay, wonderful. So now we have our du, dv, u, and v. So now we can just go ahead and plug this all into the function, into the, uh, the equation we have here. So we have uv, so that's going to be 9x squared times cosine of a negative cosine. So we can actually just put the cosine here, put a negative sign up front, um, minus v du. So we have the integral of v, which is going to be minus cosine of x du is just going to be 18x so we just we can just tag that on there and that's basically that's that's space that's our setup now however if we look at this integral here that's again not something that's entirely trivial right so in the previous one we had the integral of e to the x which is quite nice this one is a lot more complicating so as it turns out we'll have to do integration by parts on this guy again right so we have to do a second round of integration by parts here so before we do that, though, we can just cancel out these minus signs. So this goes away. So this becomes just a plus. And so to do this integral, we need to do a second round of integration of integration by parts, right? So once again, we're going to have to choose a u and dv. So hopefully you will. I hopefully hopefully you will uh, get you. Hopefully you know what the right choice for u and dv is by this point. Uh, but it's going to be u is equal to 18x and dv is equal to cosine of x dx, right? Because again, integral of cosine is nice. Integral of 18x is not as nice. Derivative of 18x is super nice. So that's why we have this choice. We can find our u and dv, our du and uh, v. So du is going to equal just 18 dx. v is going to equal integral of cosine, which is going to be uh, just sine of x actually quite nice. Again, we don't need a plus C at this stage here. We just need to add a plus C on at the end. And now we just plug this all in and we're going to have another integration by parts set up here. So the first part still carries over. So we still have this minus 9x squared cosine of x from the previous portion here. And now we once again have this set up here. So we have uv, which is going to be 18x, v is sine of x. minus v du, so minus integral of, well, we have sine of x, sine of x times du, which is going to be 18 dx, right? So we can bring the 18 up front if we want to, and the integral of sine of x is once again just going to be negative cosine, right? So our final answer is just going to be the following. So we have minus 9x squared cosine of x plus 18x sine of x plus 18 cosine of x plus c. And we get a positive here because, again, we get a negative sign out of this integral that cancels out with this other negative sign up here. 
And so our final answer is just going to be a final thing would be positive there. So this right here is our final exam, a uh, final uh, solution for this problem. Okay, so that's all the examples we'll do in this video. We'll have a practice problem video we'll look at later. But let's have a brief discussion on what makes a good choice for u and what makes a good choice for dv. So just like in u substitution, this is pretty nuanced, right? So there's no steadfast rule for what you should always choose, but there are some guidelines. So let's talk about those for just a second here. So what are some good choices for u? Well, things that simplify, right? some things that simplify when you differentiate. That's why we usually like to make our polynomial terms uh, u, right? Because when we take derivatives of polynomials, those get simpler and simpler, right? So that's why we'd like to choose those as u, as we saw in the last few examples. Another one would be things that you are unable to integrate, right? There might be some, there will be some problems, and I'll show you a lot of those in, in future videos, where one part of the integral is just not something that you are able to integrate, like by itself. Right? So when you are doing integration by parts in those kinds of situations, you want to make that your your u because you you can't integrate you can't integrate it if you make it dv. So you want to choose that as u because then you can at least take a derivative. Now, what are some good choices for dv? Now this is basically anything that's not u usually is what ends up as dv but you know what's a really good choice for dv is things that remain simple when you integrate them right so for example three of the biggest players that you will see here let's stay with red are e to the x sine of x and cosine of x right because no matter how many integrals you take of these guys, they don't get a whole lot more complicated, right? Of course, with sine and cosine, you get some sine differences, but they just don't get that, more that much more complicated. So that's why these are really great candidates for dv, right? So when you see these in an integral, you'll very often want to choose them as your dv and make the other thing u, right? So that's just a few guidelines there. Another thing I just want to briefly talk to you guys about is islet. So this is another guideline that you will see sometimes different people like to talk about this. In, you might see this in your in your classroom. Some teachers like to go over this. But ILIT basically is an acronym for what's a good choice for you and what's a good choice for DB. So ILIT stands for inverse. This is log, logarithm, let just say log. Algebraic, which basically means polynomials, x to the a. T is trig and e is exponents, or exponential functions rather, not exponents necessarily. Cool, so this is islet, but what does this really mean? Well, the way you think about this is whatever's up here, as you go further up this list, is a good choice for you. Right? The further up this list you go is a better choice for you. Conversely, the further down this list you go is a better choice for dv, right? So for example, let's say you have a function with uh, a logarithm and an exponential function multiplied together. You want to choose the logarithm function to be u and the exponential to be dv, right? That's basically what islet tells you. It's a useful little acronym to have at the back of your head just to really help you make uh, good choices for u and dv without expending too much effort. Of course, it's not a steadfast rule. It's more of just like a guideline but it's a helpful little thing that can help you navigate certain kinds of problems easier, uh, a, a little bit more easily, okay? So one last thing I wanna show you and then we'll wrap up this video. All right, so what I wanted to end this video with is just a, a little quick thing over here. So look at this, these two integrals here. Now this first one is an integration by parts integral, right? We did it using the very start of this video. You can't do this with uh, other techniques that we've learned so far. What about this one? It looks very similar, right? Because you have x e to the x. Only thing is this x in the x one is squared, that one is not. But other than that, they're pretty pretty close to identical, right? Would this also be an integration by parts integral? And the answer is no, right? This is not another integration by parts integral. This is actually a u sub integral, right? Because if you look at this, 
all we have to say is u equals x squared, right? And you know you get du is equal to 2x dx. And this becomes one of those integrals that we saw in the practice problem video, right? We have x e to the u uh, du over 2x, right? This and the x's cancel. And so this is actually a u substitution integral. You don't need to do integration by parts on this. In fact, you can't do integration by parts on this because it would uh, it would be pretty nasty because you'd have to choose e to the x squared as your du, as, as your u. And then each time you took a derivative, you'd have an additional 2x. So that would just never uh, get down to a point where you can easily find get evaluate the final integral. So the point I want to drive home with this is that just because you see a product, don't immediately start with integration by parts. Think for a second, can you do this with u sub or do something easier? Because u substitution is easier, like in arithmet arithmetically, u substitution tends to be easier than integration by parts. So don't, uh, don't forget to always look to see if there's other techniques you can use. Just like with the product rule, if you can foil it first and then take a derivative easily using power rule, do that instead of doing the product rule. So same thing here, if you can do something with u substitution, don't bother breaking your head over integration by parts. So just a little PSA here, uh, make sure you are, make sure you are, uh, you know, considering every possible integration technique. So that's it for this video. I hope you found this helpful. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. If so, you found this video helpful, please do like, share, subscribe, leave a comment and check out some other videos. See you next time.